Kia internet. You know how I was a bit worried that Jay wouldn't like that mermaid quilt I made for her? Yeah, I shouldn't have worried because she loved it. So much so that she actually asked me to make another project. But this time it's going to be a skill swap. She has requested that I make her a set of drinks coasters. And in return, she's going to knit me a scarf. Which is great because I'm not a knitter. <laughs> I feel actually like this is a bit of a lopsided deal. I'm sure there's a lot more work goes into making a scarf than there is into making a few coasters. Anyway, she's the one who proposed the deal, so she must be happy with it. So, what she asked for is four coasters and she wants them in dark blues and greens, something that won't show the dirt too much. And she wants them to be at least nine centimeters across, which is close enough to five inches that I think it's time to get out my trusty stack of random charm squares. I wanted the coasters to be similar enough that they were obviously a set, but not totally identical. I found five batiks in among my charm squares that looked like they'd work, plus another big piece of batik from my stash. But then I needed to find some other fabrics to go with them. I spent a lot of time playing around with fabrics and even pulling little scraps out of my scrap bin. But it seemed like anything that went well with the batiks, I just didn't have enough of to do anything interesting with. The idea I had in mind was to have a three and a half inch square of the batik in the center and then another fabric bordering it. But I still couldn't find enough fabrics that I liked to make the border. But then finally I hit on an idea. I found a fat quarter and a nice navy blue that worked with all of the batiks. I thought the navy might be a bit boring on its own, but then I realized I could use the scraps from the charm squares to make little cornerstones. And I could mix and match the cornerstones in one fabric with the center square in a different fabric. Having the same batiks repeat on different coasters, plus having that navy consistent through the whole, would give them a bit of coherence, but still keep them interesting. And having that nice three inch square in the center means there's no seams there where the cup's gonna sit. So hopefully it will be a bit more stable. A seam right through the center could make the cup tip over. I thought adding a binding would overwhelm the design a bit. So instead I decided to use a technique where you just sew the front and back together, right sides together, and then turn it right sides out and hand sew the gap finished. That was a little bit fiddly to do, but I think it was so worth it. Having a proper binding would have just been too much on such tiny little things. To finish them off, I top stitched around the edge and then I did a really simple little quilting design in the center just to keep them nice and flat. Even though it's simple, I think it came out looking quite effective. Well, that was pretty quick and easy, even having to do the little bit of hand stitching on each of them. And I think they turned out quite nice. I ended up making six of them, even though Jay had asked for four, because I couldn't decide which colours not to use. So, oh well, she's got a couple of spares if she doesn't actually need a whole six. <laughs> I hope you like them, Jay, and I hope everyone else has enjoyed this little demo of how to make some really quick and easy coasters. Still doesn't feel like a fair swap for the amount of knitting that goes into a scarf. Don't forget to do all those nice internetty things like liking and subscribing, and I will see you next time. Kakiti no internet. <laughs>